Right, uh, good afternoon. So uh, thank you very much to the organizers for their kind invitation to attend the uh, meeting. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Khan. I work at Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Birmingham and also at the Institute of Cardiovascular Sciences. And the title today is a simple LED PCI. What else could uh, possibly go wrong? So the background on this case this is a 67 year old lady. She's got a background history of hypertension, CKD stage three. She's not uh, diabetic and she's a non-smoker. And as you can see, she's, uh, this is an important bit of the history. She's had a previous PCI back in 2006 where she had a drug eluting stent put into the uh, mid LAD. Now she's presented with uh, CCS class two angina. Uh, she's on optimal medical therapy um, and uh, we therefore decided to uh, proceed to invasive coronary angiogram uh, based on her uh, unstable symptoms. Uh, you can see the right coronary artery is large, it's dominant uh, vessel and unobstructed. She has a very short left main stem. Uh, she has mild atheroma in the circumflex. Uh, and the take home message on this is the evidence of uh, visually significant instant restenosis in that uh, LED uh, within that uh, mid. Uh, segment. So we took a sort of pragmatic approach here. We decided just to go ahead and uh, uh, image this with uh, uh, IVUS. Uh, this is a short uh, cut down version, but essentially what we're seeing here is a slightly undersized stent. This is a stent that was put in over 15 years previously. There's some small area of mild concentric calcification just proximal to that stent. And the proximal vessel here is very large at around three and a half uh, millimeters or so. So we proceeded to uh, treat this with a, a single stent strategy, three by 36 millimeter drug eluting stent was uh, deployed here and optimized with a 3.5 non-compliant balloon with a very good uh, result, uh, both angiographically and also on the IVUS where you can see our minimal stent area was above 11 millimeters squared. Uh, the repeat IVUS didn't show any evidence of distal proximal edge dissection and we were all quite happy. Uh, you can see the final shot on the uh, screen on the right hand side here. So she was taken off the table then at this stage. Uh, TR band was put on, this was a radial approach. Uh, she was still in the lab and about 10 minutes later started complaining of some uh, retrosternal chest pain. Uh, she felt sweaty, clammy. Uh, and also importantly vomited uh, during that uh, episode. Her ECG then was undertaken and uh, showed that she had some lateral ST segment depression uh, on the evident on the ECG. So based on all of that, we decided that we needed to have another look at the uh, angiogram. Uh, and it's only when we uh, looked at the other picture that we'd taken, this was the AP cranial view, uh, what we would clearly missed here was uh, the dissection of the left main stem. So, you know, the important take home message is really to look at the whole of the picture, not just to rely uh, on the IVUS only. So retrospectively, we realized what was going on here. Uh, we'd missed that massive dissection in the uh, ostium of the uh, left main stem, which wasn't picked up uh, until later. So uh, the tricky part now is to try and get back into that uh, uh, circumflex. Uh, we now went left radial. Um, we took up a guiding catheter and very gently put a wire into uh, the circumflex. Now, before uh, we did any uh, hard injections here, we put the IVUS probe back in. Uh, this was the second IVUS catheter that we'd had to open up now at this stage. Uh, unfortunately, we were in the uh, true lumen. You can see that on the IVUS front on the left hand side here. You can see the um, uh, medial lining here, which is uh, showing you that uh, you're in the true lumen with the uh, IVUS probe, the false lumen being here uh, uh, just underneath that. So only then, uh, then we uh, took a, a hard injection just to confirm uh, how extensive this uh, dissection was. And you can see I put a second wire down into the obtuse uh, marginal uh, and then made a decision because this uh, uh, dissection was coming all the way back to the ostium of the left main stem to stent all the way back with a 3.5 uh, drug eluting stent uh, which was then optimized uh, with proximal optimization technique. Uh, at this stage we were then told that uh, she had ST elevation anteriorly 
Uh, and you can see what's happened in the AP cranial view. You can see that uh, she's started to thrombose that recently deployed stent. Uh, we'd uh, given her clopidogrel at the start of the case, uh, but of course she'd vomited, so probably didn't have very much antiplatelets on board. Uh, we gave her integralin at this stage, uh, and I also wired the upper uh, diagonal, and uh, for the astute ones amongst you, you'll be able to see that she's, there's also an extensive dissection uh, which is extending into that uh, diagonal as well. Uh, so integralin was given to her at this stage and we loaded her now with um, ticagrelor. She was given 180 milligrams of that. And this uh, dissection was confirmed uh, in the diagonal with Ivis. So I re-Ivis back into that diagonal. Uh, and surprisingly, my wire was again in the true lumen. So now I was in a, a tricky situation uh, having to decide uh, what we do here in terms of uh, whether we treat this with uh, balloons only or stents. Uh, if it is a stent technique, I'm probably going to have to deal with two bifurcations, the LED diagonal bifurcation, but also the uh, uh, LED left main stem circumflex bifurcation as well. Uh, we took our time over this. Uh, obviously, we'd done the IVIS run as well. Um, and at the end of that, actually, you can appreciate that the flow is quite uh, normal in both of the vessels. So after a period of observation on the table, we elected not to uh, intervene on that. I optimized the uh, left main stem segment of the uh, artery here uh, with a pair of kissing balloons. These are 3.5 non-compliance. Uh, into circumflex and just to open up the struts into that LED uh, just in case we needed to go back in uh, subsequently. I then Ivist back uh, from the circumflex into that uh, left main stem just to make sure that we would got osteal coverage of that uh, left main stem which was very short. Uh, you can see uh, we were very pleased with the area at above 12 millimeters squared in that left main stem uh, segment. Uh, so these are sort of my take-home messages from this uh, case. I think, you know, particularly in patients with short left main stems, you have to be really careful with handling of your guiding catheter. Um, be mindful to look for dissections. Don't just focus on the stented segment when you do your uh, final pictures. Obviously, you're looking to make sure you don't have a distal wire uh, perforation. Uh, the question I really have is, you know, could this have been a, an inherent problem with this lady's uh, coronary vessels? Uh, when she had a previous procedure done 15 years ago, she would have been in her 50s. Uh, and of course, we know that patients in their 50s are the sorts of patients who present with SCAD. So could that have been the issue uh, initially and first off? Uh, I think IVIS was particularly helpful in uh, trying to ensure that we were in the true lumen and this patient was successfully discharged home a couple of days later and is uh, still doing well. Fantastic. Thank you very much.